give us his grace and blessing and wisdom and mercy now from to the age of all ages. Amen. We spoke, uh, or you were here, I wasn't here. <laughs> we spoke last time about Christ-likeness. Does anyone, can anyone fill me in as to what was said? Because I didn't watch the video to confess. Anyone? Did anyone, was, it, was anyone here last week? <laughs> yes. Okay, join the club. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on. But um, what I anticipate that what was said was um, this verse from 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1, it's easy to remember. 1 Corinthians 1.1.1. 1, 1, 1. Um, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And St. Paul was talking about the Christian life and also he's talking about discipleship. And he's also talking about the goal that each one of us has is to be perfect in Christ. Um, <clears throat> but it is a struggle and it takes time. And it starts with maybe even the outward form. Uh, and, and then the inward power comes a little bit later. So today I'm going to talk about the greatest work. Uh, what is that exactly? I'll tell you in a second. Um, that's the first part. We'll see the greatest and then say what is it and how can I do it effectively. So I ask you first before I tell you what I think, but what is the most important aspect of Christ likeness or being like the Lord Jesus Christ? There's a lot of aspects to it. It could be a matter of opinion, but... Having your heart in the right place. Having your heart in the right place and focused on God. It's very important. Humility. Hmm? Humility. Humility. Putting yourself least like the Lord did. Uh, and St. Paul, uh, there's also a, a verse in the Philippians where St. Paul says to have the mind of Christ. And he talks about the mind of uh, the desire of going to, to the cross and taking the form of a servant. Very good. But that's not what I answered. <laughs> Anyone else? Any other ideas? Yes. Forgiveness. Forgiving others. Forgiving others. Uh, very important. And it's very related to what I have to... It's actually uh, part of what I have to speak about. Because we, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say what? Our Father. Forgive. Yeah. <laughs> we say, forgive us our trespasses. Oh as we forgive. So that is actually contingent upon or related to the forgiveness that we receive from God. <coughs> and the two are related. Um, so I think it actually has to do more with, um, with the life of repentance. And, and through the life of repentance, we're able to get to all those things that you're talking about, to be humble, to put our heart focused on God. And actually, it's, the two are, are very closely related because uh, we can't repent without a, have our, having our hearts focused. And after we repent, our hearts are even more focused. And um, we can't forgive unless we receive the forgiveness for God from God. And God won't forgive us unless we forgive others as well. So I think we're all right. <laughs> um, but especially during this blessed time of the year, during the Holy Great Lent, in which uh, we imitate the Lord in His fasting, we, uh, we get the benefits of fasting and prayer through our life. And our life is made manifest if there is a change in our life through the repentance. And if you noticed in a lot of the prayers, of the church, but especially during the Great Lent, the focus is on our sins and asking God to forgive me. I'm sure you already noticed it in, in some of the hymns uh, or many of the Lenten hymns that, that we prayed uh, today. So the church is helping us uh, in that regard. Um, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Let's focus though on why is it great? Or why is it one of the greatest things? <coughs> Can anyone give me some justification uh, in the Holy Bible or in, in, in the church life or the church, why is repentance so important? Why it, I consider it to be the, the, one of the greatest things that we, we can do. Without, yes. without repentance, you can't be forgiven. Exactly. Um, without repentance, 
we can't be forgiven. God, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave himself as a sacrifice on the cross for, for the salvation of the whole world, but not everyone is saved. So we have a part. And our part is, is called repentance. What else? It's kind of so easy <laughs> that it's a little hard. <laughs> okay, um, so I kind of divide it into three things. It's the greatest message, the greatest joy, and the greatest work. Okay, um, and we kind of touched on the greatest work. So the greatest message, uh, if you had one thing to say to the world, what would it be? I would say repent. Why? Because... Who was the greatest servant of all time? The Lord Jesus Christ, of course, he's, he, he's God and, and servant. And his first message and main message, as the gospel teaches us, in, in especially the gospel in St. Matthew and St. Luke, says from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of God is, or heaven is at hand. Um, does this sound familiar? Who is maybe one of the second greatest servants in, in the New Testament? St. John the Baptist, right? Because even the Lord said, from those born among women, none is greater than he, right? <clears throat> and, he's, and what was St. John's message? The same thing, it's almost word for word. Um, and so, uh, even it says you know, in, in the Gospel, according to St. Luke, it says, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then everyone came uh, to be baptized by him in the Jordan, and they confessed their sins. So his baptism was a baptism of repentance, and, and, and the, the Lord's baptism, as we know, was, is slightly different, and, and the baptism of dying and resurrecting with the Lord and being born from above. But that doesn't happen until we repent. Uh, and <clears throat> oftentimes we say in the church the, the, the gateway sacrament is what? A lot of times we say the gateway, baptiz uh, the gateway sacrament um, or is, is, is baptism because we can't get anything else in the church until we're baptized. But we shouldn't get baptism un unless we repent first, right? <laughs> so, uh, and oftentimes we forget that. <clears throat> Uh, even in the book of Acts, it says, Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked. He's talking about the history of, of the fall of mankind and the sin, especially of the Gentiles. But he says, Now God commands all men everywhere to repent. So this is one of the greatest uh, messages that God has for us. And there's plenty of proof from this in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And as we are going to read a lot of the prophecies during the weekdays of the Great Lent and many of the readings, uh, of the Sundays as well as we read today, the the main uh, interlinking uh, theme is is that of repentance. Uh, also mentioned in the gospel, it says, "Thus it was written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name to all nations." So. This is showing that the content of our preaching, of course, is the death and resurrection of the Lord, as we see in the preaching of the apostles. But even after that, the people say, well, what should we do? Say, repent and be baptized, uh, as, as the apostles responded to that. <coughs> I, I did have handouts, but I kind of saved them so that it didn't ruin the question in the beginning. <laughs> so we can kind of pass them. I, I can't take credit from this. One of the other fathers, uh, in the diocese, put it together, and I just kind of borrowed it. Um, <coughs> maybe if I can have one. Sorry, can I take one? <laughs> I'll forget about myself. Okay. So um, this is just kind of like a guideline. It, it was in, intended for the youth, but uh, uh, as I was trying to put something together for us, I found a lot of things are the same. So it's supposed to be a... a pamphlet to, to split up into three, but we'll get to it in, in just a minute. <coughs> so, like we said, first of all, the repentance is the greatest message. The second thing, it's the greatest joy. There's many verses in the Bible to prove this, but here's two. There will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 just who do not need repentance. This is in the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 15, 
And you know that's the chapter of the lost coin, the lost son, right? Um, and uh, so, which we'll get to in, in three weeks from now. And at the end of the story of the prodigal son, it says it was right that we should make merry and be glad. So he, the father makes a celebration for his son who repents. He said, for your brother was dead, he's speaking to his other son, his, your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So the response of repentance shouldn't be condemnation, but the opposite, rejoice. Um, and <clears throat> sometimes I have to control myself in the confession <laughs> because the person next to me will be weeping like constantly. And inside I'm happy. <laughs> Why? Because there's joy in heaven over one person who is repenting. Um, and uh, so they're, they're weeping over their sins and we're weeping at for joy. Um, this is what happened with the, the, if you look at the response of the father when, he, when the son starts to return back uh, home. <clears throat> so if you want to make God happy, repent. If you want to make yourself happy, repent. If you want to make others happy, repent. So it always ends in joy. There's godly sorrow, yes, but it leads to joy. Um, some people think repentance leads to depression. And that's not godly sorrow. <laughs> and if you're depressed, then maybe you're not repenting. <laughs> or you're repenting in the wrong way. Um, so that's the second point. That we said, like we said, it's the greatest message that we have to anyone regarding preaching. And all of our teaching, all of our um, uh, discipleship, like when we're teaching our kids, should be focused not just on learning, but on repentance. Uh, <coughs> and sometimes we, we forget that. So it's the greatest message, and it's the greatest joy. And finally, it's the greatest work. <coughs> As uh, in the Shepherd of Hermes, it says, repentance is great understanding. And if this is the only thing we do, but we do well, we would, I think we can say that we would have succeeded to attain the kingdom by the grace of God. And if you have to summarize the goal of your life, we have a lot of different callings, um, whether it's to be a priest or a servant or a doctor or um, a, a, a homemaker. Those are all important callings, but if we don't have repentance with it, then uh, we most likely will not be saved. Um, and if we do everything but repent, then our life could be wasted. Um, as we say, um, if we gain the whole world and lose our soul, uh, <coughs> what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? How to gain back the soul by the grace of God? The first step is repentance. Uh, Isaac the Syrian, yeah, I thought this was just a nice picture. I just found it online. It was related to, um, I, I guess, uh, uh, like, it, it looks like they're, you know, in danger of being, I don't even know the, the circumstances behind it. I think it's somewhere in Russia or those, uh, that area. And the ma a man decided, okay, now is the time for me to repent and to confess. And the priest here is praying the absolution over uh, this man. So, uh, as St. Isaac the Syrian mentioned, life has been given to you for repentance. So do not waste it in other things. Of course, we have to do a lot of other things, but if we forget this, the most important work, then our life could be wasted. Funny question. Okay, well, what is repentance? We have a lot of answers. Can anyone help? Very good. You saw my note. <laughs> yeah. Reorientation. Okay, very good. So, well, to answer that, okay, maybe I should have asked it out later. Okay, so go to the first page, you know, Guidance for Repentance and Confession on the very right. So, before we answer what is sin, we have to answer uh, what is repentance. We have to answer first what is sin. And the word, the Greek word is hamartia or amartia, uh, which just means missing the mark. So, the goal is perfection. But if we miss, then that's sin, okay? Um, we could be completely off track and shoot the arrow in the, in the wrong direction, or we could shoot in the right direction, but not necessarily get a bullseye. So this kind of applies to you know, the verse where it says, um, if you know to do good and don't do it, to you it is sin. 
right? So uh, that's a higher level. So let's just go to the <laughs> to the lower level first. You know, a miss is to sin against God by not being like Him. Okay, um, Adam. As you know in the story, he was created in the image and the likeness of God. So he started out being Christ-like. That's how he was created, right? And he walked with God, but then he fell from being with Him and like Him. He, he started to not act like God, and the, the punishment was not being with God. So sometimes um, the, relate, the, the result of our sin is separation. We're separating ourselves from God. And we all follow the same steps. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But what do we do to return to being with Him and like Him? Repent. Uh, if we miss the mark, like if you um, are aiming at a target and it goes a little bit to the left, what are you going to do the next time? Try the same thing the exact same way? No, it's going to probably be in the same place. right? So you have to adjust. So the, the act of adjusting is, is the repentance. It's getting back on track. Uh, and like the dictionary says, you know, it's to feel regret over something, an action or an intention, um, as if changing one's mind. So the, the, the Greek or the Coptic word for repentance is metania or metanoia. Meta and no, noia comes from you know, nous, which is mind. And meta is, is to change, correct me? You're the linguist. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so, this uh, is not just an act, but an attitude. It's a mindset. Um, sometimes we focus so much on the act, and we forget about the intentions and the thoughts and the mindset. Um, and uh, it's kind of like saying, you know, if, again, if you're aiming at... A